on to the next step here. I want to throw some brake lines on this car. Um, we've, we've went through this uh, series quite a bit of the details on how to get to this point and we're, um, we're starting to get the body on it and one of the things we do about this time is to do all the brake line plumbing. So you can see we've got the master cylinder mounted here and we've got a, we use our standard master cylinder mount kit and support. And um, our brake line kit is uh, 3 16th stainless tubing and then uh, all of the uh, braided flexible lines to go from the chassis out to the wheel. So the, it's important to plumb the master cylinder correctly. Um, they are proportioned different in, internally so that um, the master cylinder needs to be plumbed with this port to the rear and this port to the front. Uh, so you can see here, we, we, I like to put all the brake lines inside the, the chassis to protect them. I don't like them around the outside. It just looks, uh, looks crappy and it's another place for oil and debris to get caught. So we've got some conduits put in here and what this basically is, is this is just half inch chrome molly tubing. It's about an inch and a half long and we just um, wrote a brooch a hole in there and then die grind it to a little angle and that, that tube goes back in there about this far and then we weld it um, around the surface here where the two meet and uh, what we do is we tack it in there a little long and then grind it uh, flush, we'll sand it flush and then weld that solid and then finish that off on the end there so that brake line runs in there and we don't have a big hole in the chassis now we've reinforced this um, hole with a piece of conduit so like I said it goes in there a little ways and then it pops out on the other end to wherever we want to come out. So this brake line here is going in, then it's going to go forward. So it's coming down inside this tube, inside this tube, pops out here. We got our line lock right here. Same thing, got a conduit here. We're going to come out of here and bend this and uh, stick it right in here to that little port that's marked M from the master cylinder. And then we're going to use this line lock as kind of our junction block for this uh, left front wheel. So we're going to continue out of this side. These three ports here on the bottom are common. Um, so we're going to pop out of this side and we're going to run over to the other side of the car. Now this fitting here is going to get a 90 hose end on it and a flexible line and it's going to come over here and go to the brake caliper on this side. This one here will be plugged or if we monitor brake pressure on the race pack, we'll screw the sensor right into this port here and then run the cable down back to the race pack. So we're going to have a power wire and uh, once, we, uh, once we wire this up, we're going, to, we're going to jump this up here and I'll show you later on in this build, but we're going to come up here and ground this right here to that mounting bolt. And then when we wire this, we're going to actually run the wire back inside the chassis too. So we're going to, we're going to run a wire in here and come out here with that in, uh, and uh, put a, a spade connector on it right here. So if you need to change this, you can pop it apart but we'll run that wire in there with the brake line. So you can see here, we've come in here and then we kind of cut across, same thing, we've got a conduit in there. It's a small piece of 3 8 tube. It's welded on both sides. And then we jump across here and follow this tube around to the other side and jump out of here to a tab and a 90 fitting. And this will go to our right front wheel. Same thing with the back. We're gonna, we're gonna jump in here to the, to the back side and we're going to put a another conduit in and we're going to run down that that left lower frame rail and then it pops out through that rear cross member and then it's going to run up this support tube and all the way to the back here where we're going to put another 90 bulkhead and uh, drop it down to the uh, to the housing so we'll have a we'll have a flexible line here that'll kind of loop back and go to a T fitting on the top of the housing and then from there, we'll spread out and go to our caliper. So we'll just have one line here in the center and it'll have, a, have a, kind of a slight bow to it. So as the housing works up and down, that line will just flex ever so slowly with the housing travel. So this is how we're gonna get our brake fluid to the back of the car. Okay, while we're under the back of the car here, I just went over the uh, brake line plumbing. I wanna show you the fire bottle plumbing too. So this is gonna be a nitrous car. So this customer uh, elected to have a 20 pound fire system in it, which is, uh, it's not required for top sportsmen, but it's a great uh, idea for really any car. Uh, I, I, my personal opinion is you can't have too much uh, fire protection system in the car. So we've got two 10 pound bottles here and uh, uh, earlier I showed you the uh, handle mount and how the cables are going to run back here, but now we've got to run hard lines. So 
The brake lines, we used 3 16 stainless tubing, but the uh, fire bottles, we're going to use quarter inch uh, stainless tubing for that. So we're going to use quarter inch, a uh, little bigger size because we want to get the, uh, the fire uh, system to the front of the car as quickly as possible and as much capacity as possible. So this is quarter inch, so these are number four fittings here. And same thing, we've got a complete kit to plumb the fire bottles with. It comes with all the line and all the hardware. Um, we see this all the time, but flexible line is not allowed in a fire system for the simple reason that a stainless flexible line has Teflon liner. Well, if the car's on fire and it gets hot, it's gonna melt that Teflon liner out of there and the fire retardant chemical is not gonna to get to the fire. It's just gonna piss out of wherever that flexible line is. So never use flexible stainless line in the fire system. It has to be hard lined. Everything's gotta be hard lined. So we've got this connected together. We're gonna to shoot it right down the opposite side of the, of the chassis is the brake line. We're gonna run it down the outside here and we're gonna dink it right into the uh, rear cross member and right up the right lower frame rail to get it up to the front of the car. Well, we're gonna pop out here and this is the same as the brake lines. We've got a piece of conduit in there. So we've run this a little bigger tube. It's gonna be a piece of five eighths, but we've run a conduit in there on an angle, about an inch and a half, inch and a quarter long. And we've welded around the end and we're gonna pop out of here with our fire bottle uh, line. And we're gonna come up here and we want, to, we want two fittings on the engine towards the front. So it's, uh, it's important to have a fitting on, on each side and we wanna get it up in front of the engine so that if we have a fire, the uh, fire retardant agent is blowing back onto the engine in the header and valve cover area because that's where you're gonna have the fire most likely gonna be around the intake um, or any type of fuel line. So we're gonna pop out of here and we're gonna have this, uh, this T fitting and then we have a nozzle that's gonna go on top of here. So we're gonna have a coupler and a nozzle that's gonna fit on top of here. And then the, and we're gonna come off of this T and run around this fuel cell protection tube over to a T on this side and have another nozzle here. So we're gonna have two nozzles and they're both gonna be pointed back towards the engine and the valve cover and intake area. And out of the bottom of this T, we're gonna come back down and go right back into the left lower frame rail here and head towards the interior of the car so we can get some of the uh, fire extinguishing agent on the driver. So as you can see here, we've popped out on this side, come around, go back in on this side. We're gonna go back down through there. Now in that area right there, we've got brake lines and fire bottle lines running side by side in that lower tube. So as we come around here, we're gonna come out and on this particular car, everyone's a little different, but on this one, I decided to come out here right inside the frame rail here so that I could come up through the floor and get to the driver's legs and feet area. So it's kind of hard to see. You're probably not going to be able to see it at all, but it comes out the inside of the frame rail. It looks much like this outlet, but back here. And then we've, we've come out of there and curved that around so that I can put a port right here that will have a nozzle on it that's going to stick up here and, and um, aim on the driver's legs and feet area because if you've got a fire here there's not likely to be a fire start inside the car it's going to be from the engine compartment coming through any little you know crevices in the firewall or anywhere that it can sneak through there so we want to have that that uh, fire extinguisher blowing on the legs and feet area so that it's going back up towards the driver just like it is on the engine we want it to come back this way so when we're done here in final assembly we'll put a coupler on there and a nozzle and we'll have a uh, port of about two inches higher than this brake shaft and blowing on the on the feet and legs of the driver. So that uh, that completes the uh, brake lines and the fire bottle lines.